Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Chris. I'm here with Kathy and Reese, as you probably heard. We go by Ginger Marvin on Instagram and YouTube, and we have another What's Old video for you today. It is Friday, and Kathy's gonna pull out What's Old for us today. All right, we're actually gonna start over here, DB. Ah, oh my gosh. Uh -oh. Already! is just a Superman shirt that I got from the bins, so it's part of my stimulus check challenge. Um, did not sell for a ton, but it's just from Kohl's originally, so it probably cost like $12 to begin with anyways. And I sold it for $9.68 plus shipping, so about the same price Kohl's probably was. Only have about a dollar into it, so not huge money, but really easy to list and ship. And then box A-O. these I've had since last March. I thought these were so cool looking and I thought they would sell so fast um, but they did not and they're like in such good shape. They're like a Nike boot. They are women's. I don't know if I thought it was a nice boot but <laughs> a Nike know, boot? Just, I like, didn't realize. Like a, it looks like a boot right? I didn't realize that they had made boots. I don't know. Well it's not like a hardcore hiking boot or anything. Right. It just looks like a boot but anyways yeah I paid ten dollars for those at Goodwill a year ago last March and they finally sold for 25 plus shipping that was an offer I sent out just because I'm sick of looking at them so <laughs> probably doubled my money and that's about it but really glad to see them go I don't know why nobody thought they were as cool as I did <laughs> Crocs flip flops um, for twenty four ninety five free shipping. I paid five ninety nine for those at Goodwill, and the shipping was about five fifty. Box W. Yeah, these are just some a new, which somebody mentioned to us that is a Tiva brand, which I did not know. Mm. And it's funny because after this pair, I found another one, and it says like these ones. A new by Tiva. It just says a new, yeah. but the other pair I just found a couple of days ago say a new by Tiva like, huh. on the shoe. So if you didn't tell us, I would have learned it like the very <laughs> next week. But I don't remember who said yeah, that, but I... thank you. That's good to know because Tiva is a great brand and sells great. So that's probably why those have always done so well for mm -hmm. us. Alright, so AG. Levi's jacket. This is a denim jacket. I have $5.50 into it. It sold for $25 plus shipping. Um, that was an offer I sent to a watcher. And box AO. This is just a vineyard vine button down. You guys see me sell these every day. <laughs> um, I love the little whales, so since my son has to wear collared shirts to school, we own a ton of those um i don't remember where i got that one but i sold it for 17.56 free ship shipping was just over three dollars it's super lightweight so probably lost a few bucks from what i originally paid but he wore it many times to school so and then we're gonna go to ck is just an H&M jacket. This is a kid is in sale now. Um, the only kid is in sale for today. $20 free ship on that guy. This was also my son's. I got it off Poshmark for $15. So after shipping and fee, I think I lose a couple bucks, but all right. All right. And then we had one Facebook sale in box BY. I haven't had a Facebook sale in a couple days. I feel like I haven't been listing much. And just like other platforms, if you don't list, you don't sell. So mm -hmm. uh, this one, these I got at Plato's Closet. They priced their Chacos usually at 25. I had a 20% off this day, so I paid 20 for them and I sold them for 50 plus ship. So still a really good margin there. Right, and then box. Well, I guess I kind of walked over there because <laughs> these are like all in the A. So AI here so these are some Hudson jeans these are actually my personal jeans so I think I got them at Play-Doh's closet I don't remember what I paid for them I've had them for a few years actually love those jeans so much but <laughs> COVID 
they're a COVID casualty. <laughs> they don't fit me anymore. So, um, yeah, they were like, they were just like the perfectly worn in jeans. They didn't like stretch out when you would wear them like most of my jeans do. So, yeah, I'm sad to see them go, but I sold them for $17 on Posh. That was an offer I accepted. So I probably, at Play-Doh's, I couldn't have paid more than like $20 for a pair of jeans. So probably made most of my money back there. Okay. This was just something I got from Thread Up to get my cash back. So I do have $12 into these. They're the brand new, new, new. What's their logo if you ever see it? Uh, looks like a sheep or something with like skull and crossbones. So, <laughs> anyways, those I paid $12 for them on Thread Up. I sold them for $20 on Posh just because I was getting my $12 back plus a few extra bucks. So, happy with that. Tommy. Oh. I don't think I've seen any Tommy <laughs> Bahama today. This is actually Tommy Hilfiger. Mm. Uh, so this actually also sold to a viewer, Nadia. She said she loves to watch our videos while she sews at night. So that's pretty cool. I wish I knew how to sew. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely a useful thing to know. So <laughs> thank you so much for your purchase and for watching our video. So she bought this. I actually was sending out offers this morning. So I think I had it listed at 35 and then I sent her 28 with discounted shipping and she accepted. So I got that at Goodwill for seven. So I think I made 20 after the fees and everything. Thank you for your support, Nadia. Yes, we appreciate thank you it. so much. And then Mercari now. So AD. This is another one of my son's Vineyard Vines things. Uh, this is a windbreaker. It's actually Vineyard Vines for Target. So. Um, I did buy this when they, that line came out from Target and they weren't offering discounts or anything. I don't remember what retail was. It was probably like $19.99 or $24.99, but yeah. Sold it for $21 plus ship and both of my kids actually have worn that now, so. Alright, AG. This little Scentsy Unicorn Clip Buddy thing from the bins, Stimulus Check Challenge. Sold for $9 plus ship, so not huge money, but I have about a buck into it, so I'll take that. Yeah. AV. Oh, this one is, this is probably my most exciting sale. It's also the most profitable sale today, I think, but I'm just excited because we've had these for two years. Yeah. Um, we bought these at Goodwill for $10 at the time in 2018. We bought these in 2018, so I think we actually have had them for three years almost because we bought them yeah. in june i think so these were we we with. first per like when we were first purchasing adult shoes this was like one yeah. of our very first <laughs> adult shoe purchases for resale yeah and i think Chris we thought we had a home run them, yeah <laughs> we were looking them up on ebay we didn't sell on ebay at the time we didn't even sell on poshmark yet i don't think or we were just starting to we were think just about starting it. i think yeah so yeah chris found them and we looked them up on ebay they looked like there were some comps for like a hundred bucks or something mm -hmm. so we're like yeah we're gonna try those out and we got them home they were a little dirty so we've been cleaning them up then it took us forever to get them listed yeah i don't know why oh i don't know why we found them in the men's department so we just assumed they were men's but then i tried them on they're nine and a half which is i'm like a nine and a half ten and they like fit perfectly so then we realized they were women's Mm -hmm. um, then I like was googling about them and stuff. So they're Polo Ralph Lauren, but they're like the Olympic team yeah. something or other. So they made them for men and for women, but the markings inside, like normally I can tell a Euro mm -hmm. 40 is like a nine and a half or whatever. This didn't have anything like that. It just said nine and a half. So yeah. Hopefully there's no issues with this buyer. They are a new buyer on Mercari. They have zero feedback or anything. They just created their account this month. So. Hopefully they read everything. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I said they're women's nine and a half. I said they fit true to size and everything like that. So fingers crossed because <laughs> they sold for $63 plus shipping, which oh, is okay. great. So yeah. And I, they're really nice shoes. Yeah. They are like super heavy duty and really Were they nice. available outside like to the public or was it only to like people in the Olympics or? I didn't look up that much. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like. There's not a ton available. So right. I don't know. The way I kind of was thinking, it was like a like an Olympic issued for the American team kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I I, that, I don't like know if I that means it was worn by an Olympian it because it was like a stock photo of like a whole bunch of different people wearing them. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if it was just for Olympians or or yeah. staff or stuff <laughs> yeah. like that, but 
Team USA. Happy to sell them. Hopefully, no issues. Yeah, hopefully it all works out good. <laughs> all right, this is just one of those Love Never Fails shirts. Uh, this one sold for a whole seven dollars plus shipping. That was an offer <laughs> I sent. And then, um, yeah, I bought them each for two bucks. I've had several of them, and at this point, it just wasn't a great pickup, so I'm accepting offers on them to move them. So yeah, I think I made like $3 profit and that's okay with me. <laughs> All right, and then last seal is going to be in the closet, another bra. Yeah, we seem to keep selling at least one bra a day, it seems, huh? Yeah. How many more are there hanging right now? Mm, like less than 10, less I Less than 10. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more. We have plenty more to list though. <laughs> Sorry, Reese. Right, so yeah, this guy sold on Mercari for an offer of $18 plus buyer paid shipping. So all right. What's so, up, dude? I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff packed up. You're active today. I tripped on him when I was backing up, so he's <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get this stuff packed up and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got all that stuff packed up and we did not get another sale rate. No, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> uh, we have no real updates on the momentum board. Um, we've actually decided we're going to try to, I know we've talked about it a little bit, but we're going to try to make a little trip um, a couple days next week. So... We're going to be looking into like shutting down all of our store vacation moding all of our stores that we can and all that um but that'll be sometime next week uh, we'll still probably do some thrifting and stuff out there so i'm sure you guys will get to see where we go and do all that kind of stuff so, but um yeah we're gonna go ahead and do some viewer questions but we got to run these off to the post office right now um, because they're closing like in like 15 minutes. All right, guys, so we're back. We did want to answer a few uh, viewer questions. Um, it actually is the next day. You'll probably notice I'm wearing something different. We forgot to, we ran out of time to record these last night, but I did want to add them into this video. So we're going to go ahead and, and answer a few viewer questions that we have. Yeah, so first up, we had Heather ask a couple questions. So the first one was, um, do I have to have an eBay store in order to end and sell similar like we showed in a video? So this was, I think, an older video. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of just showed you guys how to bulk sell similar on eBay or bulk relist if you'd like to do it that way. Um, basically, every day we end however many items are already ending that day and then just do the sell similar and it takes almost no time at all. So that's what she's referring to. Um, she said she followed our directions, her screen looked different and she wasn't able to. So she's wondering if she needed an eBay store to do so. So honestly, I don't remember what it was like before um, mm -hmm. we had our eBay store because we pretty much got an eBay store like a month or so after starting eBay. I hit that 50 or whatever free listings really fast. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but most likely that probably is the case. Yeah, and I did pull up this page here, uh, Heather, and when you see why create your eBay store, I have it highlighted there. Optimize, use ex what, exclusive powerful tools to optimize your listings. Sorry, we have <laughs> somebody on a four-wheeler driving by. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do think that that might be the reason. Um, but if you are a reseller and you're doing... I don't know what how many listings would you think like it's totally worth opening an ebay store yeah, at least the basic if ones. you're actively selling every month you think they have even a five dollar store that you'd at least yeah. get the benefits like you wouldn't get like the store coupon but you'd get probably able to do that right you'd be able to put your store on vacation mode and run sales and stuff that's definitely in it in mm -hmm. itself worth five dollars a month so do you know if you get the discount on fees on the basic store or is that no yeah, we don't know the exact comparison. What's the store level we have? The, uh, the it's like the third one. The third level, which normally basic, has a thousand starter, listings a month. Premium, right? And I've heard that next month they're dropping the well, not dropping, but like changing the thousand limit store to like ten thousand. So like right. the store that we've been paying for this whole time, next month supposedly we'll have 
10,000 listings that we can list. It's funny because I just was like, okay, yeah. let's get rid of all of our cheap stuff so that <laughs> I can stay under 1,000. And now they're like, oh, well, we're going to give everyone 10,000 now. So yeah. it's actually a blessing, but um, yeah. So now next month will be better than ever yeah. to start your eBay store yeah. if you're doing a lot of listings and <laughs> we highly recommend it. You do get like the free, like we have all this eBay tape. Yeah, even, well, not so up with there. the $5 one, you wouldn't get that coupon, but even right. with the like 29 or whatever dollar one, mm -hmm. you'd at least get like a $25 quarterly coupon, which, yeah, that tape was not even that much. Yeah, we get tape, a lot so. of, like a lot of those brown paper boxes are yes. eBay that we got for free. Some bubble mailers. Bubble mailers, yep. Oh. So it's yeah. totally worth it. Obviously, look into it for yourself and see if it's worth it for you. But mm -hmm. if you're selling any kind of regular, you know on the regular you're you're probably gonna at least pay for it with your fees so yeah. your fee deduct reduction and like i don't think a lot of people realize so your ebay store people are like well i only list 200 items a month or 100 yeah. items a month but it's also rolling over all your old items that you previously listed so that mm -hmm. it counts those as new every single month when yep. they um relist. relist themselves so that's why we do the end and sell similar because if it just goes on its own, it's still charging you one of your listings. Right. So um, we like to end them all and then just put them back as fresher and usually change a little something about them to make them more desirable, I guess. Yeah, I'm just going to close this window real quick. <laughs> There's a lot of action going on out there right now. It's like a, a really nice sunny day. <laughs> a lot of people are outside. Yeah. All right. And then her other question was... I know you've answered a ton of questions and maybe done a video about eBay shipping, but my brain can't seem to figure it out. Do you do calculated shipping or same cost to all buyers or something else? Thanks. Uh, so this is, again, this is not really a good answer because we do all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, I just decide as I list something what I'm going to do. So almost always a first class item, I'm just going to pick the price. Um, you, you're never going to know the exact price because it changes no matter who buys your item, depending on where they live from you mm -hmm. so i just usually do the high end like i know you know an eight ounce item i think the most i've paid now with the new shipping prices is like 369 so i usually do like 358 to 369 something like that uh, sometimes it's a little less you just pocket a few cents it's not mm -hmm. a big deal um and then like the most i think anything is right now is like i mean if you're like sending to hawaii or something i think it's like 5.99 for a first class so mm -hmm. I usually do 581 I think for like a one pound package just under one pound so yeah first class I pretty much always just pick a price and put it as buyer pays whatever price I say um, once something hits one pound I if it can fit in a padded flat rate that's usually gonna be your best bet unless they live in the same state as you you can usually get a two pound rate for less but yeah so if you can fit in it in that it only costs you what 776 through eBay to buy mm -hmm. a padded flat rate but the retail price is like 855 mm -hmm. so i usually charge them 855 just for my you know it's it's shipping it and does handling cost, yeah. so you know yeah. we're paying for our labels our time and things like that I the material well obviously we don't it's pay for the material. padded flat rate but we do use the yeah. cellophane bags also so we double protect so yeah anyway so i usually charge 855 for a padded flat rate and then if it can't fit in that i usually just go to calculated shipping um for anything over one pound that's too big to fit in a pedal flat rate mm -hmm. and i know you know we've been watching a lot of youtube this week where people are like don't ever do calculated shipping so honestly i think it's your personal preference mm -hmm. i seem to sell plenty with my calculated shipping so i was just getting burned too much on shipping before when i was doing it differently where i would just say like 10 bucks then it would sell to and like puerto rico like <laughs> yeah. going super far away hawaii puerto rico yeah so I don't know i mean honestly even if we did it that way it'd be about the same mm -hmm. so yeah it's just like whatever you want <laughs> um you just kind of get used to it once you do it so long i already know like yeah. i know a two pound package is not going to cost me more than maybe twelve dollars more like eleven dollars mm -hmm. it's usually between eight to eleven and then above that you know it's just a couple extra dollars per pound and usually the more pounds, the less price, because as long as you can fit it in a standard box, if it's not like yeah. a bat or something ridiculously long or, well, people ship bats and tennis rackets for decent prices, too. Yeah. We just haven't done that yet, so, but yeah.
So I'll just add to that because I think the, the best thing you can do is keep it simple to start. Try to keep things that are like the same size, maybe under a pound if you're doing clothes. That should be fairly easy. Shoes, you could do padded flat rates. Um, just try to keep it simple at first and expect to make some mistakes. I think that's the best way to learn, especially with shipping because there's so many different variables. Just start and expect to make some mistakes expect to lose a few bucks here and there um it's not likely that you're gonna you know lose a lot of money on shipping small items so that's why i'm trying to say keep things small don't start with like a you know a vintage vase that's you know 30 pounds um do some shoes do some clothes that can't really get damaged um in shipping usually or lost but um I think that's going to be your best bet and then you'll learn and you'll figure it out and then it'll just be that muscle memory. That's kind of what Kathy's at. I'm not very good at shipping. Kathy does all the shipping. She gets mad at me because sometimes I don't remember the things, but I think, you know, just she, we went through those growing pains a little bit in the beginning of, with the shipping. So I think everybody kind of has to go through that. That's my opinion. So. Yeah. But like, I mean, if you're selling shoes like us yeah. and if, if you know that it's not going to cost you more than maybe $12 at the very, very most, most likely $11 to ship two pounds from anywhere from one to two pounds, you might lose a buck yeah. or two. That's, it shouldn't be a big deal. Like you should be selling mm -hmm. something for enough profit that it one to two bucks is not going to kill you. And then yeah. on the flip side, lots of times I was selling stuff that I charged $10 for shipping and it only cost me eight. So right. Really, it does kind of even out. I just prefer calculated shipping because I'd rather um, keep the main price lower. Mm -hmm. And then I know I usually pocket a dollar or so off every calculated shipping after I pay out what I pay through eBay. So, yeah. Hopefully that helps, yeah, yes. Hopefully it <laughs> so, it um, is scary. I, I know shipping is like one of the biggest yeah, that's hurdles the for resellers. Yeah, I didn't want to do eBay in the first place, yeah. but it's it hasn't been too bad. All right, and then so our last question was from Mindy. She's asking, I would really love to understand how it is that you guys decide which platform you sell on when you find an item. Would you be willing to make a video about that at some point? So it's kind of a two-part question. So that yeah. part, um, as far as where we decide to sell it, we sell it on all the platforms. So yeah. like these are the items I'm working on today. Yeah, like these are, well, I haven't listed them yet, but... I just got done photographing on like these two are kids items, so they'll definitely go on Kidizen, but they're also gonna get cross posted to everywhere eBay, mm -hmm. Mercari, and uh, Poshmark. I haven't been too good about posting the Facebook Marketplace other than a few a day, so for now, just those they just go everywhere. You just, you just don't really know where someone's gonna yeah. buy them. Although we did say in April we're going to start doing eBay only first for a while. So yeah, that's probably going to change. And then like these are some men's jeans. So these are going to go to Poshmark, Mercari, and uh, eBay. Same with these. So yeah, we just post everything as long as it's allowed to be posted on a platform. We post it there. Uh, we don't pick and choose because then that's where you end up with a bunch of stuff that you've had for yeah. a long time. You don't ever, you don't have the photos in your phone anymore. Luckily, we use List Perfectly, so we can always cross-post, but it's easier to just keep it on a schedule of yeah. cross-posting at the same time. So, currently, as soon as I list an item, I cross-post it the same day or the next day to all the other platforms that you can. So, that's how we do that. And then, starting in April, we kind of want to try eBay. I want to get my eBay total up, so not mm -hmm. only my total, but just like I want to the more that I can just ship on one platform, the better, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> in April, I think we're going to start doing that. Uh, just list to eBay for at least seven days, maybe 14 days, and then cross-post. Yeah, if it hasn't sold by then, we would cross-post it. Just to save a little bit of time on cross-posting, since eBay is our biggest seller, um, it just makes sense to yeah. start there and then... But I never look at an item and say, that's not going to sell on eBay. Right. I'm not going to post it to eBay because you just never know. You get surprised every day. Especially with List Perfectly. Uh, obviously, if you're manually cross-listing, you're probably going to you know think about it a little bit more. Yeah. But with List Perfectly, it takes just a minute or so to yes. cross-list it. It's just worth it to do that than to even think about you know not listing it there, in, in my opinion. 
And then um, I'm curious too why you sell on Kitizen specifically as opposed to the other choices. I've never sold on Kitizen but might try it out. Do you find that your take home after fees, etc., is best on Kitizen when it comes to kid stuff? Thanks for your video. So, um, the main reason I sell on Kitizen is because when I was looking, so before I was a full time reseller, I was specifically looking just for somewhere to sell kid stuff. I was just kind of doing it as a hobby. I, I think we've told this story before, but in our neighborhood, somebody was having a big like church garage sale to like raise a bunch of money. So they had so many donations. I had picked through it, picked things I wanted, but I was there for hours and only picked through a tiny portion of it. So I said, "Hey, if you have any of this stuff, when um, when, when your garage sale's, sales over, over yeah. here's my number. Give me a call. I live down the street. I'll come, you know, make you an offer on the rest of the clothes." So. That's what I did. She called me and I think 40 or 50 bucks. I got like tons of garbage bags of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it was all kind of like sight unseen because I right. never got to look through it. But I figured I could at least make that back. So took the chance and I took it all. I sorted it all. You know, anything with holes, stains, bad condition I just tossed. I uh, took stuff to Once Upon a Child, Plato's Closet, Clothes Mentor, got some money from there. So already profited and then I had a ton left and I was like, what am I gonna do with all this? Most of it was kid stuff. So I was looking for somewhere to sell it and kid is in popped up. So I started an account and yeah, yeah, the rest is history. So that's kind of how I found kid is in and why I was selling on there for a while. So then it was, I was selling on there for at least two years before I even branched knew. to Poshmark. Yeah, like right? I didn't, I wasn't even thinking of it as reselling at the time. I was just like, oh, I'm just, this is just what I do yeah. as a stay at home mom. It was more just to pay for the clothes that you were buying for the kids. Yeah, I just so. you know, had some funny money coming in. So yeah. Um, and then once I, we kind of like started watching YouTube, you know, we found Empty Hanger, Rally Roots, all those guys. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of started branching out to the adult stuff. So uh, as far as kid is in, I won't say that like I'm getting the most profit, but mm -hmm. at this point I have like, you know, people that keep coming back to our store yeah. because they found stuff that they liked. Their kids are similar in age and size and I don't know. I mean, I feel like <laughs> the, like these are going to sell for the same price no matter where I list them at. Yeah. Um, these like Riley and Cruise Home Chunks, they're probably going to sell for 35-ish dollars no matter what platform I post them on. So oops i'm going to post them out all, on all and then just see what offers i get and decide from there so all right that was an was eBay that, sale was that the question though? Was that the <laughs> i think so question? yeah yeah so i won't i wouldn't say my take homes more the fees are about the same on all kid is in his 12 percent plus 50 cents mercari's around that as well now I, they keep changing all their fees so yeah. like Mercari's was 10 for the longest time and then they just switched it this year and then eBay is what around 13 mm percent -hmm. So they're all about the same um, So I usually come out about the same no matter where it sells Yeah Hopefully that does answer your question um, So yeah, Mindy that is kind of a overview like kid is is kind of you know our our origin story if you will uh, more or less. I think Kathy ha had sold on Mercari a little bit before that point, but it was never really looked at as a business, more of just a hobby. And yeah, so um, she's super established on Kitizen. People know her. Her store has a lot of sales, a lot of history. I also think Kathy does love selling on Kitizen because it is more of, um, you know, a mom swap kind of app versus eBay, which, you know, you, you don't really get to see who you're selling to. It's not that social media kind of app that Kid is in and like Poshmark is. So um, Kid is in is basically just Poshmark for kids clothes. It's a lot smaller of an audience, um, but it's a really good audience to sell to if you love selling kids clothes. So we do highly recommend it if you're into selling kids clothes. I don't know. I don't know if um, if it would click with you if you're not into selling kids clothes. Um, it does seem like there's a little bit of more of a higher market or a higher, what do I want to say? Um, like higher quality brands, I guess. Um, you know, you'll have a harder time selling a lot of the mall brand kid stuff there. But um, yeah, we, we like selling it. And if you are interested in selling on Kidizen and you haven't started an account there, we do have a link in our description 
so that you can get what five dollars i think you get five dollars towards your first purchase um and yeah so at least give it a shot if that's something you are interested in but that's going to do it for today guys thank you so much for the great questions and hope you enjoyed the what's old we'll see you guys in the next one bye